Hello everyone. My name is Hang Ho Lee. Uh, I'm a professor at uh, Handong Global University. Nice meeting you all. Uh, the topic that I wanted to talk today is about pandemic and compulsory license. So mainly I want to talk about the relationship between pandemic and patent law and maybe patent policy or strategy. Uh, so today, this is the, the con table of contents that I want to discuss today. Briefly, I will talk about the concept of patent law. So what is patent law or intellectual property? And then I will just uh, explain the concept of licenses. So especially there are three different types of a license. One is exclusive license and non-exclusive license and compulsory license there, which is the, the topic uh, for today's class. And then I will talk about the WTO TRIPS agreement and the relationship between WTO and the patent law in any given uh, country. And then at number four, we will talk about uh, WTO trips and flexibility. And I will explain why these uh, policies or principles or agreements are relevant to the pandemic. And then uh, at number five, I will briefly explain about the case of Korea. And I think it will be very helpful for you to understand the concept. So let's start from the number one. What is patent law? You may heard about intellectual property rights. We just call it IPR. And usually in intellectual property law, we mention like there are four or five uh, different body of laws. One is patent law, and the other one is trademark law, and copyright, and trade secret. Sometimes you also call or uh, include, uh, you know, trade address or unfair competition somehow. But today, let me just give you a very brief introduction of the concepts of patent, trademark, copyright, and trade secret. So what is patent? Patent is basically protecting the idea. If you have a very good idea and if you want to make certain you know, invention based on your idea, those ideas can be protected by patent law. Uh, what about trademark? Trademark is trusting, I mean, protecting the trust in the consumer's uh, mind. Therefore, it is to uh, avoid any confusion uh, in the consumer's uh, mind. For example, let's say I show you several examples of trademark here. And here, you know, Apple's, uh, Apple's logo. So let's assume that in Korea, we have a new Apple store so you stop by Apple store and you know, you just enter there, you found certain device, certain device and you saw the Apple's logo here. By looking at Apple's logo, immediately you have a certain trust. You believe that, you know, Steve Jobs will never, never uh, fail any device. He will not disappoint you. Therefore you're thinking that, okay, it has Apple's logo. Therefore, you may have certain level of quality. You know, this is how we can use the, the trademark. And so trademark is protecting the trust in the consumer's mind. And then it is used to avoid any confusion. If you know government uh, allow others to use the Apple's logo on their device, probably you know, consumer's point of view, they might be confused whether this device is made by the Apple of Steve Jobs or this device is made by anyone who is uh, claimed to use the trademark. So to, uh, to avoid this kind of confusion, you know, uh, government can uh, provide certain trademark exclusive right to the applicant and for the, for the use. Therefore, it may protect the trust or it may avoid any confusion. What about copyright? Well, copyright has more, uh, you know, more common issues. I, uh, show, I'm showing you one paint, but this is not only ex exhaustive example. For example, if you, you watch some movie, video clip, all this, uh, you know, expression is protected by copyright. 
So basically, copyright is protecting the people's uh, uh, expression. Expression. Lastly, but not leastly, the, what is the trade secret? Trade secret is protecting the secret. So so long as you keep certain thing uh, in secret, then it is protected. Let me give you some example. So Coca-Cola, you know how to make Coca-Cola. Uh, you're kind of only one who knows how to make Coca-Cola. And as an owner of this company, you may have certain choices. Maybe you can seek some protection on the patent law, or you can uh, ask some protection on the trade secret. So what is the difference between the protection on the patent law and protection on the trade secret? In patent, I will explain a little bit more, uh, about more in detail later. But once you file a patent application, those patent application will be disclosed to the public. And then this patent has some limited period of time protection period. So for example, if you file a patent application from the filing day, you have only 20 years for the protection. That means after 20 years, this patent is open to everyone and anyone. So anyone and everyone can uh, use this knowledge to, for their own use. So in this case, if I, I file a patent application for the protection of uh, make the, making the method of Coca-Cola, then after 20 years, you know, anyone and everyone can make this Coca-Cola. And I have no means against them because patent expires. But what about trade secret? So long as it, it is kept, uh, kept as secret, then I can say that, well, this is secret. Therefore, on the trade secret, I can seek the protection. And you may think, oh, then trade secret will be better for protection. Well, for this example, Coca-Cola, the answer is yes. The only reason why is because it is an extremely difficult subject for reverse engineering. That means once you make Coca-Cola and put it on the market and you know everyone can drink it, but it is very difficult for them to figure out how to make Coca-Cola, right? So it is difficult for reverse engineering. But what about this cup? Let's say I invented this cup and then I start to sell it on the market and people just looking at this uh, cup and they immediately know how to make it. So it is very easy for reverse engineering. And usually most uh, inventions are easy subject for reverse engineering. Therefore, it is not a secret. Once you make it and start to sell it, you know, you know consumer will buy it and disassemble it and observe it, study it, and then they will figure out how to make your invention. Therefore, uh, since that is not a secret anymore, it is very difficult to seek the protection on the trade secret. Instead, if you file a patent application, you know, at least for 20 years from the following day, you can uh, find certain uh, uh, protection on the patent system. So that is very good advantage why people are filing uh, patent law. So, so far we just talk about very brief concept of patent, trademark, copyright, and trade secret. And let me just talk more about patent law. So again, what is patent law? In patent law, uh, you know, uh, in patent law, patent is kind of a contract between government and inventor. So government is basically saying that Hey, inventor, you invented something. Why don't you disclose your idea to public? And inventor goes, hey, okay, I will disclose my idea, but in exchange of those disclosure, what can I get out of it? The government is saying that, okay, if you disclose your idea, and if I believe that you meet a certain uh, requirement for patent, then I will give you monopoly right uh, for limited period of time, usually 20 years. So it's kind of deal. If you're an inventor, or you want to seek some you know, protection uh, for limited period of time, then what you can do is you can disclose it and you file it. And then in exchange of those disclosure, the government will give you monopoly power for limited period of time. Okay, that is very basic idea of patent law. 
But one thing you also need to remember is about the territory principle. That means let's say we have two countries, country A and country B, okay, country A and country B, and you decide to file patent application in country A only, and you decide not to file a patent application in country B. In that case, and you, you get a patent, you have valid patent in country A, then the enforceability of your patent right is limited within the country A. But think about the basic uh, principle of patent law. Patent law means, I, as I just mentioned, you need to disclose your idea to public. But how? How are you going to disclose your idea? Nowadays, most country uh, uh, use the technology of the internet. So once inventors submit their invention, and those inventions will be published through the internet. And let's say you're living in country B. And obviously, you have an internet access to country A, right? So if the inventor file patent application in country A, and the inventor may have patent right within country A, however, the disclosure of the invention will be disclosed to the globe. And anyone living in country B may have access to the country A. That's the problem. So we need to think about, like, well, if you are an inventor, you need to think about to which country you need to file a patent application and why do you need to file those patent applications. That is something that you need to understand about patent law. Okay? And next one. So what is patent law? Um, what is patent right? So if you have patent right, what can you do? So basically, uh, patent right is uh, the exclusive right granted to the patentee. Therefore, patentee, patentee means patent owner. Patent owner has certain right to prevent others from making, using, selling, or distributing the patented invention without permission. So if you have patent within country A, what you can do is you can make, use, sell, or distribute the patent invention. Okay. Now, uh, I just talk about in you know, a pattern of for about 10 minutes. And now you may wonder why do we need to know about patent law because title was pandemic and compulsory license. You're yeah, right, you're right. You're getting it there. Well, uh, I just want to talk about the medicine drug. If we have pandemic, if we have some disease, uh, definitely what we need is medicine. This can cure those diseases. And what we need to remember is most drug or medicine is protected by patent law. If you are in a pharmaceutical company and you want to seek your protection, then pharmaceutical company will file patent application in certain country. For example, in this case, country A. In that case, the pharmaceutical company may have exclusive right uh, to prevent others from making, using, selling, or distributing the medicine. This is very important problem because, important issue, because if you are in a country A and you have some certain pandemic or disease and you desperately need some, some medicine, right now, you know, COVID-19, does not have any you know, solid uh, medicine, but let's assume that in the future, we have certain uh, pandemic and there is some um, medicine and, and we wanna use it so that we can distribute it and then so that people can receive those medicine and you know, got healed uh, from their disease. However, one thing we need to consider is patent right. Patent right, somebody may have patent right in, in, your, in country A or your country, and we need to resolve this issue, okay? That's why I'm explaining the patent law here. So what is the basic requirement for patent law? It has uh, actually four elements. Number one is patent of the subject matter. Number two, your, the invention should be novel in your previous art, and it should be non-obvious. And when we file patent application, it should have sufficient written description and enablement uh, requirement. Let me explain just one by one briefly. For today's topic, 
uh, I think number one, pattern of the subject matter is the most important matter, important topic. So I will uh, explain a little bit more in the next slide. And what about novelty, non-obviousness, and written descriptions? Let me just give you a very basic uh, idea. If you invented something, your invention should be different from previous invention, right? Otherwise, you know, there's no reason to receive patent right. If your invention is exactly the same with the other one, then why should we receive the patent right? Your invention should be different anyway. That's number two, novelty issue. Your invention should be different. And number three, if your invention is just mere modification of previous invention, just twist a little bit. So it's not really difficult to make those modifications, then you, you should not receive invention. So your invention should be non-obvious in view of previous invention. That is number three. The novelty and non-obviousness is a major requirement for most countries. And if I invented something that flying uh, in the you know in the sky, and I need to provide all those details. Otherwise, if I just say, hey, I invent something that can fly the sky in the sky, then the other person may ask, oh, what is your invention? So, well, I invented it. And period, doesn't make sense. I need to provide all the details of my invention when I submit uh, my patent application. So that is another requirement. Uh, number four, when I submit something, I need to provide sufficient you know, description of the invention. But let's talk about number one, what is pattern of subject matter? This is quite important for today's topic. Usually, uh, pattern of subject matter includes four different things. One is process, Number two, machine. Number three, uh, manufacturer. Number four, uh, composition of matter. So for, for those three out of these four are uh, very obvious. If you invent a certain machine, like computer, should, I mean, it should be protected by patent law. If you invent a certain you know, cup or chair or table, these are not really machine but it is, they are called as manufacturer. They, they can be protected by patent law as well. And process, if you invent a certain new uh, process, those process can be protected by patent law as well. But what about composition of matter? Composition of matter. Now we are talking about patent of subject matter. That means which category can be protected by patent law. So for example, in Korea, let's say I gave you the silly joke. It was very new and very, uh, you know, witty. However, it was a silly joke. And then I want to say, hey, I want to get a patent on this joke. No, those pattern and sorry, those uh, joke cannot be protected by patent law because there are only four categories usually, and patent is only protecting process, machine, manufacture, or composition of matter. You, my joke doesn't fall in any one of these four categories. Therefore, I cannot see any protection, right? But number four, what is number four? Composition of matter. If you look at this uh, picture closely, it is about medicine, pharmaceutical invention. Very important, guys, because patent law is also protect the medicine. If you have new medicine or drug, that drug can be protected by patent law. Okay, I hope you remember this, this part. I will just come back one more time and then uh, try to give you some uh, conclusion. So overall, intellectual property is very important, especially for underdeveloped countries, because if, if you have patent law and patent system, it can be a pretty good attraction to foreign investment. So if we want to boost up our economy, what should we do? You, we, we need to have a lot of investment from foreign countries. For example, Samsung. Samsung, uh, you want to receive a lot of investment Samsung. But Samsung's point of view, if they invest their money and if they started their fac uh, factory in country A, but if their technology is leaked, and the other person tried to steal the idea, then probably they would hesitate to invest their money 
or uh, skills into their country. Therefore, if the country has pretty strong, you know, intellectual property protection, there is good attraction to foreign investment. And if you have, you know, IP protection, intellectual property protection, it is a good encouragement for the creation of business. So in this sense, uh, intellectual property right is quite important. Now, let me just go to the next one. So now, I, so far, I explained the concept of patent law. And then now let me give you a little bit more details of a license. What does that mean, license? License means that, uh, for example, I have patent, right? I have certain technology how to make, for example, iPhone. Let's say I know I have certain technology uh, how to make iPhone. But I do not want to, you know, run my factory. So what I can do is, okay, there's another person who has technology, who has certain money, but they, uh, they really uh, want to use my technology. In that case, what I can say is, I, I will give you license, therefore you can use my technology, but you need to pay certain fees back to me. So I have technology, I have patent right, and I'm giving some permission to a third party, and third party is using my technology, and then they are paying fee, that is called royalty. So, all this agreement is called license. There are three types of license, exclusive, non-exclusive, and compulsory. So what is exclusive license? Exclusive license means that, for example, I have patent, right? And I gave an exclusive license to company A. Then in country A, that means this company A is only one who can use my technology in this country. So no person or business other than the designated licensee can use the intellectual property of mine. That is exclusive license. What about non-exclusive license? I say, it says non-exclusive. Therefore, you're not the only one. So if I'm patent owner, I can give permission. Okay, you can use it. Use my technology. You can use my technology. You can use my technology. So multiple people can use my technology without any interference among themselves. That is called non-exclusive license. So these are very typical example of license. But what about compulsory license? Compulsory license is the topic that I really want to dig in today. Compulsory license is an authorization uh, given by a national authority to a person for the use and exploitation of a patent product or process without the consent of the uh, patent holder. Well, it's a little bit complicated, so maybe I can give you some example here. So situation is this. Let's say this is country A. So now this one is country A. And in this country, you know, there was swine flu. Well, actually, similar thing happened in Korea about 10 years ago. So in Korea, you know, swine flu was everywhere. It became a pandemic. But there was some, you know, medicine which can cure this swine flu. The name of medicine was Tamiflu. You may heard about this term, right? Tamiflu. The problem is Tamiflu it's the medicine developed by the company named Roshu. Roshu is a European company. And Roshu filed patent application in this given country. Then think about the situation, what's happening here. What's happening here is this. People are suffering from swine flu. Swine flu is everywhere right? And there is medicine. So if you take this medicine, then immediately you can see the difference. But the problem is this medicine is protected by patent law, and this patent right is held by private company called Roshu. Roshu is European company and private company. Uh, 
you may be able to see why this is an issue because swine flu, uh, flu is very serious problem. It can be a risk or it can, it can be a threat to the national security or you know, national health problem. But now the decision is not on, on the country even, it is, depends on a private company called Loshu. Loshu said, oh, sorry, I don't wanna sell it. Then what happened? What about Loshu cannot provide the sufficient amount of medicine? We need 1 million, but they said, oh, 1 million is too, too high. We cannot provide 1 million. Then what should we do? Again, you know, once you file a patent application, all the details of the medicine will be disclosed through the patent system, right? And then, uh, let's say in this country, for example, in Korea, we have companies A and B and C, and they are all pharmaceutical company. And since all these patents are, I mean, patents held by Rushu has been disclosed, you know, these companies has capacity to uh, manufacture Tamiflu. They know how to make Tamiflu. However, in this case, you know, the decision can be made by Roshu, not the company ABC, not by the uh, government. This is the issue. So if we go back to the concept of compulsory license, compulsory license is kind of exception to the patent law. So basically compulsory license is kind of authorization from the government. So government is saying that, well, right now this is emergency. This is very urgent situation. Therefore, we do not have any time to talk with Roshu or any private company. Uh, I know this is a violation of patent law. However, as a government, I will just give you permission to produce uh, this medicine because people are dying here and there. So you need to make this medicine. You need to just generate this medicine and then we need to take it and we need to deliver it to our people. That is kind of compulsory license. That is compulsory license. So basically compulsory license is kind of exception or kind of ignoring the concept of pattern due to uh, the urgent situation. Right, the situation is so urgent, therefore we will just give some kind of exception uh, to the patent law that is called compulsory license. So look at uh, this table here. You know, this is a world drug market and this is world population. And as you can see, you know, Northern America and Europe and Japan, they, they have, you know, their population is not that much. However, they're consuming more than half of all this medicine. And in a swine flu situation, actually, you know, Roshu was not able to make that amount, uh, amount of um, Tamiflu required for the global needs. Well, they may have enough uh, medicine for developed countries, but what about third world uh, countries? Uh, they desperately need this medicine, but Rushu was not able to meet those requirements. So sometimes, as an exception, uh, this compulsory license is permitted. And these are examples uh, of compulsory license. So as you can see, there are many uh, countries which uh, exercise their compulsory license to meet the requirement because they are saying that, you know, right now it is emergent situation. It is emergency. So we are exercising our right uh, to perform the compulsory license. Okay. And now all of a sudden, I want to talk about WTO and the compulsory license or pandemic. Why? Why this is so important and what is the relevancy here? Uh, well, let me explain about WTO a little bit, and then I will talk about TRIPS agreement as well. Uh, trip, when we say TRIPS agreement, uh, actually TRIPS agreement uh, means that the agreement on trade related aspect of intellectual property rights. So it is an international agreement between all members, uh, member nations of uh, WTO. That means 
if you want to be a member of WPO, then you need to agree with TRIPS agreement. So in TRIPS agreement, it sets down the minimum standards for the regulation by national government of many forms of intellectual property. And, you know, the TRIPS was negotiated among many uh, countries. Why this is important? Let me explain one more time. Here, let's say your country wanted to be a member of WTO. And WTO is great gateway for the bigger market, obviously. And if you we can be a member of WTO, and it is great because you have access to bigger market and you have a lot of benefit, uh, which are great. However, WTO is basically saying that, okay, you can be a member of WTO. However, there's some qualification and requirement, which is this. We have kind of contract called TRIPS agreement. And within this TRIPS agreement, we have a bunch of, you know, different uh, body of laws related to pattern, copyright, and industrial design, and layout designs of IC, uh, integrated uh, circuits. So if you want to be a member of WTO, you need to sign on TRIPS agreement. And uh, according to this TRIPS agreement, you need to you know, promulgate and implement all these intellectual property laws into your domestic layer, domestic level. So if you do not have any patent law, you need to implement patent law according to this TRIPS agreement, which is required by WTO. Uh, require, I mean, qualification. So, you know, ratification of TRIPS is a compulsory requirement of WTO membership. So if, again, if you are seeking to have some access to WTO, then you need to sign TRIPS agreement. But why this is a problem? Why this is problem? So let me explain it here briefly. Let's say there is company A and there is, com uh, sorry, country A and country B. Country A is less developed country. Country B is more developed country, right? So for example, country B is USA. It is pretty developed country. They have a lot of, you know, R&D to be protected. So, for example, they have a lot of, you know, res, um, patents, and they know how to make a lot of good medicine. And if they file patent application in this country A, then who would get the benefit? Well, from country A's point of view, they, they may need some patent law to protect their domestic industry. And also they wanted to attract the foreign, foreign countries, uh, you know, investment. So country A can say, we have patent law. So if you invest your money, if you start to have your com uh, factory within this country, we can protect it. But that protection is actually for country B or companies in, uh, from country B, because in this case, Country A may not have enough domestic industry. So there's nothing to protect in country A. So, you know, this is only for country B, not for country A, because in country A, they do not have much domestic industry. Therefore, they may not file any patent application. Only companies from country B may want to file patent application in country A, and country A need to protect it. So, you know, as a country A, this is a little bit um, difficult requirement. So they might hesitate, oh, do I need to sign on TRIPS agreement or is it really beneficial? So there are cons and uh, pros, obviously. Uh, again, good thing is it can be a good attraction to foreign countries. But the other side is it is actually, you know, giving some disadvantage to domestic uh, companies because it's not really protecting their domestic industry. So they are in some dilemma. However, again, these are requirements. If you want to be a member of WTO, you need to sign on it, okay? 
And at the same time, the pharmaceutical area could be a problem. For example, not only for industry, industrial development, what about company, I mean, company from country B has patent on this medicine and they want to file a patent application in country A. A is less developed country. Do they really need to protect those invention? This invention is related to pharmaceutical uh, invention and if company A, I'm sorry, country A protect this invention, sometimes if a country A has pandemic, then, you know, they are running at risk. You know, it can be a great threat to country A's, you know, national security and national health. So country A is hesitating whether they need to sign on this agreement or not. Well, I will explain a little bit more later. So we will just be, uh, explain this concept again and again. Uh, so by the end of this lecture, you may be familiar with these concepts. And WTO has its own dispute settlement procedure. So WTO, uh, WTO's agreement is not just you know, symbolic agreement. It actually has certain rules and they want to enforce this principle. So once you sign on it, then you need to be very serious about that. That's something, uh, some, some other characteristic of WTO. Now, so far I explained the basic concept of patent laws. I said, if you have some idea and you wanna protect those ideas, you need to disclose it, okay, that's patent law. And there is compulsory license concept. That means even though under the patent law, those concepts should be, those ideas should be protected by patent law, exception is called compulsory license. Government can kick in and government can say that this is so urgent situation. So I know you have patent, right? However, let me just use it. Let me just give, give this permission to other companies so they can generate this medicine. Uh, so let's, um, let's overcome the given situation, uh, crisis. Uh, and then we will, we will uh, discuss it later. And then we talk about WTO. Uh, you know, let's say they are a third world country. They wanted to be a part of WTO. And the problem is they wanted to, you know, they need to sign on TRIPS agreement. That means they need to accept the IP law. Well, let me explain in this way here. So for example, there is country A. Country A wanted to be a part of a WTO. And WTO is saying that, okay, if you wanna be a WTO, you need to sign TRIPS agreement. In TRIPS agreement, it has IP law. In IP law, you need to protect what? Process and machine and manufacture and more importantly, pharmaceutical you know, matter of composition. Pharmaceutical invention may need to protect it. So that means if A want to be a part of a WTO, then A need to protect pharmaceutical invention. That means let's say there's company X and this is a European company and they want to file patent application in country A about their medicine. And when we have pandemic, that a country A need to protect this patent law on behalf of this country, I mean, company X. So that be, they can be very serious, you know, political and legal problem. So what should we do? And WTO provides some flexibility. In other words, some exceptions, especially for least developed countries. If the company, a country, uh, is country falls in the least developed country category, then they may enjoy certain uh, flexibility because they understand that if if WTO just uh, are, I mean urge that to sign trips uh, have IP and protect pharmaceutical invention, then it can be national threat. Therefore, uh, WTO decide that we're gonna give some flexibility. This is called Doha Declaration. Uh, but this, so 
let me explain about this concept, uh, TRIPS uh, Agreement and Flexibility. So Doha Declaration is a WTO statement that clarifies the scope of TRIPS, stating, for example, the TRIPS can and should be interpreted in the light of the goal to promote access to the medicine for all. And the details is given later, but basically, uh, the TRIPS flexibility has two major aspects here. Okay. The number one is compulsory licensing, and number two is the exception for patentability. What it means, again, so country A wanted to be a part of WTO, and that means they need to protect pharmaceutical invention, correct? Now, uh, WTO TRIPS is giving some two options. Number one, you can use compulsory license. Number two, you can change subject matter. It means, first, let me talk about uh, subject matter first. So something according to this flexibility and TRIPS is giving some extension. Okay, country A, you don't need to protect the pharmaceutical invention at this moment. I will give you more time. So right now you need to protect only process and machine and manufacture, but not pharmaceutical. This is not protected at this moment. Since it is not protected on the patent law, if there is company X, they want to file this patent application in country A, but they cannot get us, uh, they cannot seek the protection for this pharmaceutical invention, right? Because WTO is giving some flexibility, saying that you are least developed country, therefore you need to have more flexibility. You do not need to protect pharmaceutical invention. Therefore, in your patent law, you don't really need to protect it. So we will give you more time. So wh while you are having uh, you know, this protection or extension, maybe you can boost up your domestic uh, industry. What about compulsory license? This is also given by WTO is saying that basically, uh, you know, if you are in urgent situation, if it is an emergency, then you can invoke compulsory license. So compulsory license can be a part of your patent law. So that case means now in subject matter, you are protecting pharmaceutical uh, invention. So now you're protecting it, but still you have exception. The exception is compulsory license. So if it is urgent, then uh, the com country A can exercise compulsory licensing. Okay. okay, so I just explained this concept. And yes, so I, I explained the concept one more time, All right? So this is least developed country, and this is developed country, and they want to file a patent application in this country, com country A. In the case, in the case, country A has two different strategies. One is, you can say, oh, I don't want to protect pharmaceutical invention. It's related to subject matter. Number two, even if we protect it, I have another option, which is called compulsory license. Therefore, uh, you know, if it is urgent situation, then I, I do not really need to recognize your patent right. So country A has two different approaches. And more details. Uh, WTO recognized that as least developed countries, LDC, these countries uh, may have certain, certain flexibility. So initially, initially those country has some expansion until 2016 for the pharmaceutical product patents. But right now this uh, year has been extended to 2033. So you can extend your uh, protection for pharmaceutical invention until 2033. That means, you know, even if you have pandemic, 
you do not really need to worry about patent law because you are not actually protecting those pharmaceutical invasion anyway, right? So for that, you need to qualify as LDC, least developed country. And then if you fall in here and maybe the country can extend their flexibility until 2033, okay? For remaining time, I will just want to give you a very brief uh, explanation about Korea. Uh, maybe first, uh, it's not really current situation. I just want to talk about maybe 30 years ago or 40 years ago, what happened in Korea. If you look at here, uh, you know, the orange line is the per capita GNI and the blue line is the number of patent application. So as you can see, the Korean economy goes well and you know, the number of patents goes up and goes down and goes down together. So, you know, patent, the number of patent application is quite uh, reflecting the Korean economic situation. Now, uh, let's look at the more details. In Korea, in Korea, up until, you know, middle of 1975, Korea was not that attractive country for foreigners, and there was not much domestic industry. So, you know, the number of patent applications was very small. In this case, the red line is representing the number of patent applications uh, filed by Korean, and blue line is re representing the patent application number filed by foreigners. As you can see, up until 1975, the whole numbers are pretty low. And during this period of time, this period of time, as you can see, the foreigners uh, start to file more application than Korean. The reason is Korea became a little bit more attractive for them. So they, I mean, foreigner wanted to protect their, uh, their invention within Korea. That's why they start to file patent application in Korea. And in Korea, you, we have some domestic industry. However, you know, we need more time for uh, research and development. So the number of patent application was lower, smaller than the number of patent applications filed by foreigners. But starting from this moment, uh, you know, early uh, 1990s, the number of patent application filed by Korean became a lot higher than the number of patent application by foreigners because somehow Korea was able to manage their uh, domestic industry and domestic industry was able to accumulate the R&D. And, you know, when they reach a certain point, they start to file more patent application to protect their R&D. There's something to be protected. That's why they file patent application. And, you know, in 1995, South Korea became a WTO member country. And after it became a member of WTO, except for a uh, difficult, you know, IMF crisis, except for those period of time, Korea, since Korea is connected to a bigger market, so, you know, the trade volume became, you know, exponentially uh, growth. Okay. And I will just skip this part. And this is more important uh, conclusion for today. So what happened in Korea? Again, in Korea, when we started, the domestic industry was struggled because they have not much technology. So there's not many things to file patent application to protect their asset or idea. Uh, however, you know, foreign countries, they uh, gave us some pressure. They're saying that, hey, Korea, you need to protect the pharmaceutical invention. You need to protect pharmaceutical invention. So we knew that one day we need to protect pharmaceutical invention. If you look at here, there's total applications. And, you know, as you can see, Korea's, uh, Korean's patent application was very low and mostly the the patent application for foreigner is about 
these patent numbers are only for pharmaceutical area, pharmaceutical area. So as you can see, you know, foreign patents outnumber Korean's patent application. But over time, over time, you can see the, the percentage is growing. So now, I mean, at this moment, Korea's patent application is only for 5%. But later it became 12 uh, point. It's growing. And then the, you know, the share of foreign applicants is, de I mean, decreasing. What happened? What is so important here? So Korean government knew that it is very important to protect the pharmaceutical area because uh, if we just start to protect the foreign, foreigners' patent application, probably it will kill, sweep out all domestic industries. So Korean government decided to provide certain funds to raise those R&D. So Korean government start to uh, do some R&D and they develop some uh, technology and they increase the you know, private sector in Korea. So due to this effort, the uh, Korean industry was able to file more patent application and they invest their time and money uh, for pharmaceutical invention. Right now, you know, Korean government was uh, trying to delay the protection. Uh, so they're using two different tactics. One is they try to delay the protection for pharmaceutical uh, invention. But at a certain point, they, I mean, Korean government need to protect it. And after that point, probably the Korean government was able to protect their domestic, I mean, uh, national security by uh, compulsory license. So they are using two different tools. And at the same time, not only using the law itself, the Korean government understand the situation, so they invest their money to raise and boost the domestic industry. Therefore, Therefore, uh, this is the, the final result. Uh, there were 300, uh, 693 patent applications by filed by Korean inventors, and 30% was by newcomers. So Korean government was able to uh, kind of you know, invite newcomers into this industry. And 27% was filed by government-funded research institution. So Korean government actually plays a certain role here because they invest their money. So they encourage the researchers to do some R&D and they were able to file patent application. And there was traditional pharmaceutical companies, 41%. <coughs> so even though Korean government start to protect the pharmaceutical invention, uh, you know, traditional pharmaceutical domestic uh, company were able to survive uh, you know, in a fight against the foreign, uh, foreign pharmaceutical con uh, companies. So, you know, it shows how state lead the, the industrial transformation with the amendment of the substantive law. So, uh, my point is, when we look at the pandemic and patent law, we need to look at uh, more. We need to take a more holistic approach. We first we need to understand the legal framework. For example, you know, you can use Doha declaration flexibility so that we can extend the time and if possible, maybe we decide not to protect the pharmaceutical invention. So that while doing that, you know, the country can focus on their domestic industry. So they just boost up their domestic industry. And at a certain point, at a certain point, they need to protect the pharmaceutical invention and then the country can use compulsory license if necessary. And in the meanwhile, as a government, they need to invest their money to boost up the domestic uh, industry. Otherwise, you know, it can be a very difficult uphill uh, battle against foreign uh, pharmaceutical co uh, countries, I mean companies. And it can risk, it can be a risk uh, for the national security and national, uh, national health problem.
So this is it. And I hope this lecture is helpful. And if you have any question, you can email me. And then that's it. Thank you so much. Uh, again, my name is Hang Wo Lee. I'm professor at uh, Handong Global University. Uh, bye.